Hello everyone, welcome back to the uh, eighth episode of the second season of Star Trek's Adventures Cerberus Station. This is going to be a bit of a different episode because for once the crew is not in mortal danger and the universe is not at stake and I promise there will be no Q shenanigans. Well, I hope. We'll see. The... Um, Reason for this particular session is just to get to know the characters a little bit better, um, as that has been one of the feedback that has been given to me over the past few sessions is a lot of story, but not a lot of characters. So I'm going to change that, and I hope that the I hope that my fellow players come along the ride with me, and I hope you enjoy wherever this story goes. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Commander Dalrum, you have the opening log. Indeed, I do. Stardate, 83159.2. The last two weeks have been a whirlwind of events for us here on Cerberus. As interests in the area have heightened uh, and our presence here has become more known to our galactic neighbors, the captain and I have decided now was the time to host the Lasai Summit, a galactic summit of the governmental powers of the region. In total, 12 regional government representatives will be visiting the station for the summit. The captain has at, tasked me with organizing the events while he handles the station's day-to-day -day operations during the planning. I have recalled all of the station's fleet vessels, all six of them, to assist with the summit preparations, namely as de delegate transport as well as uh, uh, delegate uh, words. Uh <laughs> delegate comfort there we go we'll go with that uh many of the delegates uh didn't have the ships to withstand the forces of the nebula or the travel so for the the preparations uh so far the preparations have been coming along although there have been several obstacles we have come across several of the species uh attending require an aqua saline environment this is the first test of our diplomatic suites in this way and our engineering teams have come across some troubles with the controls um we have uh, run into some bureaucratic issues as well due to how quickly the summit came together our distance from federation space um and our our distance from federation space our only diplomatic core representative uh for the summit will be paul our resident here at uh, the station along with the captain and myself. Um, I have delegated several of the security traditions to uh, Com Lieutenant Commander Deimos and his department to coordinate. Uh, there are also several engineering needs that Lieutenant Commander Kivan uh, has been working on. I have also asked Commander Arya to have extra medical supplies and to communicate with all the delegate homeworlds to make sure that if any medical needs arise, we can hit handle it. Uh, we have also alerted all of our local ambassadors here on the station of the summit uh, for them to prepare. I have asked them all to meet me in the main meeting room this morning to make our uh, make sure final preparations have been taken care of for when the delegates arrive tomorrow. This will be service to the station's debut appearance for many of our uh, galactic neighbors. The captain and I hope that we can create a more permanent relationship with these species, which may eventually lead to Federation membership. This next week will be our shining moment. I hope we can live up to everyone's expectations. End log. Okay. <clears throat> that is a heck of a wordy opening log, but one that was necessary to convey the grandeur and the scope of what is going to be happening. So, as requested, the first scene is going to take place in the main meeting room. Uh, between are hosted by Commander Dalrum, Captain Crawford, all the senior staff are present. Also are several of the ambassadors of the local local representatives. And I believe, so feel free to take it away. Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone's preparations have been going well. Uh, I wanted to bring everyone here just to make sure that the final preparations the day before the summit uh, are coming along and hopefully answer any questions that may have cropped up. 
uh, I have a list of things I wanted to go over. However, if anybody has anything they would like to bring up, feel free to bring it up. Uh, first thing, Lieutenant Commander Demos, how are the preparations for uh, the different security details coming? Yeah, we got a sizable staff here, so we're doing good. The civilian side will be picking up the slack, though, in non-critical areas within the command structure. So they'll be in some of the more areas where we typically have normal security options. But these are individuals I trust. Very good. Uh, I'm assuming that you have this covered, but make sure that we have a couple security officers on deck 77 um, at all times with this many uh, foreign governments, some of which are not the friendliest toward each other. We want to make sure that if anything were to arise, we can act quickly. Yes, I do have the Kasala and the... Which one was it here? The uh... the Nalu, I believe. Yes, they are kept at the distant end, and the any corridors leading to them are peppered with guards on standby. Very good. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Kivan, how are all the engineering st uh, needs coming along? I know we ran into some issues with our aquatic diplomatic suites. They're, they've been having their fair share of issues, but actually I was able to get a hold of my loon, and she had some insights in actually how to help with the aquatic setup since she works in the AI course. So... I was able to get something working at more or less about an 80 to 85% efficiency. It may not be the most comfortable for some of our delegates, but while they're still here, I'm going to try to still keep working on it. I've got my engineering teams working back up with me, and you know, I, I just want to make sure that I'm delegating out enough responsibility so that I can also be around in case any of the delegates you know, want to get an idea about the station. Of course, just not too much about the station. I understand that. Um, make sure we make Mayloon available for both the aquatics, but also the uh, was it the zealous technocracy. Um, they're very interested in AI, so Mayloon may be able to tickle their fancy. I will keep that in mind. All right. Um, Commander Arya, uh, I just wanted to double check that you've uh, made contact with all the homeworlds of our delegates uh, and have made preparations for any medical things that may have arised or may arise. Well, as I can, sir. The Nalu are not the most communicative of species, and I have never even act heard of these Ul K before, but apparently they're humanoid, so if they're humanoid, I can fix them up. Um, I have concerns over. And she flips through one of her pads it was the anointing unguents of the Casaval empire they want to bless the sacred they want to bless the meeting spaces each morning i with these these chemicals are safe for humanoids but i cannot guarantee how they will work with some with different biology with their different biologies i will have nurse standing by just in case if you choose to let them do it i of course advise against it but that's my medical opinion i'll make sure that once that representative uh comes aboard that i talk to him i think it's a good idea to at least have them do it the first day as respect for their their customs but after that if um uh, I don't think we have to do it necessarily every day. Um, but I will touch base with them, and I will let you, you know what is happening there. She shrugs. And on the other note, the Togolau should no longer be treated as a biotoxin by our transporters and our... Um, uh, our medic... Ah, uh, our um, airborne disease detection systems... That's a relief. They were very worried about that. <clears throat> well. uh, for the Togolau, I do still have their parts per million scan, so if they are admitting any spores, life support should pick it up and contain. We'll also get a notice if they are starting to spread out a little more than they should. Hmm. USS Nighthawk has had a Togolau plant 
on board for the last several months. Here, they seem to be, it seems to be coping very well with their environment. I shall send you the information. Excellent, thank you. Very good. I love the uh, communication. Uh, I also wanted to check in. Thank you, Apatu and Peric, for being in on the meeting. How are the civilians uh, coming along with preparations for the summit? It's their time to shine as well. Uh, Paul uh, leans forward and op- uh, lays his palms open on the uh, conference room table as a gesture of happiness. Quite well, I must say. Uh, the school children are quite excited to meet all of them to at least catch a glimpse of all of these new species and have got made a grand preparation and have gone to great lengths to come up with a um, ch- a theater play for the culture night uh, three days from now. Universal translators seem to be processing the languages of the more unique species well enough. There might be a couple foibles here and there, but what can you really do? Very good. And that leads me into the next one. Uh, Paul, as well as uh, our ambassadors here, thank you for coming. How are, are your preparations coming in? And do you, do you have any questions over anything for the summit? Uh, Damon Gong, the F- Ferengi, leans forward. Ah, yes, Captain and Commander. I, would, I understand that there is at least one sus, um, mercantile-focused species. I am that has requested to set up a shop. This shop is qu- quite close to our embassy on the boulevard. Would it be possible to, say, move them... Well, actually, move them next door, perhaps? It would do a... Uh, uh, it would improve the relationship possibilities between our uh, two cultures, and, I should say, increase a an increase in foot traffic into our... Ex- ex- our market, I mean, our embassy would be greatly appreciated. Dolrum just chuckles. I will take a look at that, uh, Daemon, and uh, see if we can move them. They were asking for a specific space. Um, they are also one of our aquatic species, so we have to make sure that the shop is able to be used with their environment. Ah, yes. Hmm. Jellyfish. Uh, we don't have any jellyfish on Frankenar. Are they edible? Not that I would like to, you know, eat these in particular. However, should they move gracefully and look pretty, I would not mind having some jellyfish for dinner one night. To my knowledge, they are not. But if you wish to look into that further, I will not stop you, Daemon. Uh, Daemon immediately glances over to Aria, begins to open her mouth in question, and Ambassador Hanesa of the Romulans immediately speaks up, cutting her off. The Romulans are most interested in further cementing our ties, both with Starfleet and any newfound friends out here. And the ambassador, the Klingon ambassador, Otok, just says, Ha! I really hope I can fight one of them. You know, just a sparring match, of course. Well, he was just going to lean forward and just look at the Klingon. What? One of them has just... four arms. You can't say that you don't want to see how they fight. Well, Ambassador, we could possibly set up uh, a sparring ring uh, on one of the free nights that they have, provided that they feel the same. Although, I do wish that we do not have any killing <laughs> due to the f- sparring. Captain, Commander, what sort of Klingon do you take me for? If you want killing done, he just shoulders over to the groggy ambassador, uh, Klavok. You want killing done, you just, you know, him. He gets a backhand across the chest from the slightly less lethargic ambassador, and Odok just laughs. And to respond to you, Ambassador Hanase, I feel the same way. I think this is a great opportunity for us um, in this room to come together uh, and build our relations as well as to build our relations with our galactic neighbors. Uh, This could really be beneficial for all of us in this room. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, Lieutenant Dusk just quickly um, raises her hand. 
uh, sir, the USS Polar Stern should return with, within a day's trip from the uh, Scorpi territory. And I've one of the Slipniers should be back momentarily from the uh, Ibani territories. They've decided not to showcase our Slipstream capabilities just yet. Fair enough. I was just going to have a meeting with all of our uh, fleet captains to touch base on them and ask them how the escorting of the ambassadors and their delegations are coming, as well as um, touch base on if they have any questions over the their duties during the summit. Um, it was a little unorthodox for us to recall the six uh, ships, but I think it's also a good idea to have are um, everyone here for this event. Dust nods, her hair shimmers ever so slightly. Right, can be. As near as I can tell, I've heard no... Uh, all ships, as of uh, 0800 hours, have reported that their schedules are on time and that they have made their rendezvous successfully. Of course, the Vitaris and know their way back in, so that we haven't bothered escorting them. Uh, the Zealous have requested a military escort because they currently don't trust the uh, Vitars, given their recent conflict on the planet Etov. Indeed, I was reading up on that uh, before this meeting. I will make sure that I talk to... We can hopefully maybe iron that out and talk to them. All right. Um, we have a few other requests here that we will. Uh, I will send to everybody individually uh, to make sure that all of our delegates' wishes are being met to the best of our ability. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited. It'll be interesting. If we can keep certain parts of the station from flooding over into more warmer sections i think will be perfect especially especially in the habitat area indeed are there any other questions comments or concerns to bring before our diplomatic team here before we spend our last day preparing for this nothing comes to mind not from security side of things no commander, I'm just going to get my engineering teams and put in a little extra work myself to make sure that these delegate areas are as up to snuff as I can get them before everybody arrives. Very good. Well, if there's nothing more, uh, everyone is dismissed. Paul, I would like to talk to you here just for a minute. Paul nods. <clears throat> Anybody have any last business here? Nope. nope. Okay. Cool. Paul, let's head on back to my office. I wanted to touch base on some of the uh, diplomatic core side of things. Paul nods. And the two of you shall head off to your own separate place. Okay. Uh, so, who wants to do what for the next scene? Mm. You guys um, have a day to do. Nope. The uh, the Draven are here, are that aren't they? No, they have not. Um, they have not been mentioned as any as arriving, nor have they responded to any attempts at communication. Interesting. Okay. Um. In that case, I don't think I really have anything at the moment. Okay. Um, Mr. Dalrum. Actually, yes. Uh, sorry. Actually, you just had the major scene. Uh, Kevin, Demos, do you guys want to have a scene somewhere doing something? Uh, yeah. if it's right after the meeting, yeah, yeah sure. Sure. Just run in the hallway. Okay. You two are in a hallway. Wrong button, right button. Okay, um, Keevan, you're heading to the turbo lift when the heavy footfalls of Demos catch up behind you. 
I'm going to hold open the um, turbo lift door for Demos to roll on up. Thanks, Chief. Hey, not a problem. Um, if I haven't gotten into enough detail with you, um, besides everything going on, um, I have a project that I want to work mm -hmm. in conjunction. As much as I've been helping you on the Apollo, I think I'm going to have something to give it a little more help. Oh, they can make it faster, right? Well, it might not make it faster, but it'll definitely keep it from getting pounded all at once. Interesting. We already did reinforce the hull, but what do you think of adding? Something that came about when we were getting boarded by those sh sh the, those pods that it kept hitting the station. It was right right after I got promoted, so my main mine is a little fuzzy about that. But basically, I've been fiddling around with some of the technology from there, and I figured a way to basically make some sort of ablative shielding, basically along the lines of almost like the um, hull armor on the old NX classes back in before the Federation was born. Okay, I'm rusty with my old Federation history, so the short the for short version I f think of this being is basically you're still going to have the Apollo's main shields, but once those go down, once those get to an appointed point, or we decide to just put a fail-safe activation to it, basically a few well-placed tiles along the entire surface of the Apollo will actually enable it as a secondary hull slash shielding. So it's going to be as strong as the hull plating, but then it's going to be able to act like a shield and be able to be more defensive against energy weapons, which we tend to be running into, and especially with the issues that we sometimes run into, not necessarily going through the transwarp gates, but dealing with things on the other side of the gates. Okay, kind of like a, um, a shield line. First shield line goes down, secondary kick in, they move up and forward and take their place, let the other guys recover. Very, yes, exactly like that. Basically, this is going to keep, since the Apollo, st you're still planning on not having the, any weapons on the Apollo, just purely a run-and-gun ship, right? Yeah, essentially the Apollo is my pet project to zip around fast and also when, whenever I feel my time here is done, to leave. Okay, fair enough, my friend. Yes, basically the shields are going to, the, this, this extra ablative shielding, which I've nicknamed Gobstopper, please don't ask. <laughs> just go with me on it basically acts as an extra level shielding that's going to harden up and basically keep the ship as protected as it can if the main shields go down and then still doesn't bite into the hull itself keeping you know as much of the ship composed as possible hmm. well I'm definitely interested in that uh, I had an idea for you though for the um I'm going to forget their name every time. The Jellyfish Folk. The Medal. He just looks around like, who said that? <laughs> Rami shows up and waves, and then disappears. <laughs> so, they... They're going to be in the tank, from what I'm understanding. Uh, that's going to be a bit of a nightmare to keep beaming them around. But I was thinking that uh, you attach... What are they called again? Transport inhibitors, not not inhibitors. Enhancers. That's what they're called? Yeah. Pattern. Off to pattern, yes, thank you. Technology here is interesting. Um, just to help move them around a little easier, keep a better lock on them. I don't feel like having, what was that, uh, incident aboard the refit of the Enterprise, where they lost their uh, first officer, I believe, or science officer. I see what you mean. Yes, it, yeah, it was the science officer. I remember that story very well, unfortunately. 
Yeah, it came up in my research of uh, how we would move them around and any concerns, and Rami was nice to give me a visual and audio record of that moment. Oh, how sweet of her. You don't have to talk to my loon about that. Maybe a little bit, like an extra 5% on the discretion meter on, on Rami, maybe? It got the point across, so... <laughs> Plus, don't, I don't, don't think... Need... Plus, I don't think that anybody really wants to be getting their nice, you know, dress whites a little wet from extra, you know, liquid on the carpet. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we can also work that into... Yeah, the medalla is going to be a little bit of a problem, but I don't think it's going to be that much. I'm just more worried about those Romulans a little bit. I mean, it sounds like... You know, did you, did you hear him talking about jellyfish? Just, like, come on, be a little respectful. However, you know, I've dealt with many Romulans in my time. Or, not Romulans, Fed, <laughs> Ferengi. Yeah, I'm going to have to get things straight before this conference, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, make sure you don't call, you know, the Kasala, the Madal, or whatever. That will be uh, not good. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but yeah, definitely the pattern enhancers, we're probably going to need to just set up in some major spots so that, you know, we might not want to pull too much energy from all too many systems all at once. We might have to see if we can limit how many medallas are on the station at a time. I don't want to step on anybody's toes or tendrils or whatnot, but you know what I mean. Yeah, well, for power consumption-wise, we do have the refinery up now, so we shouldn't be worried too much about running out of any uh, deuterium mixtures. That's true, and we can actually even shut down some of the some of the facilities for the time being if we absolutely need to, because we don't really need everything going down there 24-7 like we were. Oh, I miss being an engineer. <laughs> Sorry, you're not taking my job. No, your job sounds too easy. <laughs> you, why don't you try... <laughs> once I, you help me put my project into the Apollo, you're going to see how much it's not that easy. It took a <laughs> while to figure out, among other things. And let's not talk about redesigning some of the um, dignitary quarters on 77. I'm not going to go into that one right now. Well, one thing I'll say about this universe is there's an abundance of life. It's nice to see. You know, one day, I'm just saying, if I ever got a way to see your universe, that would be something I would kind of be interested in. Actually, I've been working on um, holographic programs since my brain is literally a computer, different design. I've been trying to bridge and explain to the computer how things looked and operated, but it's making me homesick. You know, being a Denobulan that spent a lot of time growing up on Beta Z and then being around everywhere, you kind of miss, really miss home home. I understand exactly where you're talking. Well, Chief, if you need any help with anything, let me know, and uh, let the guys know down in the shuttle bay that you got access to the Apollo. I will do that. Oh. Thank you. And if, yeah, we'll talk more. Yeah, make sure Decon knows, too. She might take the screwdriver to you if you board the ship. Yeah, maybe I'll just look at my refined plan for the overlay first before and then have you go with me maybe probably after the conference is over yeah we'll see <laughs> sounds good commander okay now the captain had requested a, a quick one on one with the counselor captain is this a good time for it um I actually want to change up who I do that with ah if you Fine. Sure. Who do you want to do it with? Um, I actually want to go talk to uh, Commander Dolrum. Okay. You will find the commander in his uh, office. Uh, so, Commander Dolrum, you are 
in your office chatting with Paul. As soon as I find Paul, he's around here somewhere. There you are. There he is. <clears throat> and just as you're about to finish up with Paul, there's a second chime at your door. Oh, well, Paul, I hope everything is, will be all right. You're our only diplomatic corps representative here, so we got to make the most of it. Paul nods and places both his both his hands at his sides as a gesture of self-certainty. This is the most fun I've had in about a year. Commander, I'm looking forward to it. Good to hear. You have a great rest of your day in preparations. Enter. And you will see... Uh, and probably what's been a rare occasion I would almost assume uh, the captain walks in Paul nods in respect before taking his leave Captain I don't typically get to see you in my office what can I do for you uh, he kind of walks in takes a chair uh, even though there's a lot of activity going on you can tell he has sort of a somber look on his face um you know even though there's <laughs> there's a lot going on um I can't help but feel that I don't think I've told you much about uh my time before Starfleet have I not particularly I've also never asked. Well, I can't help but think, uh... I guess for now, better way of putting it, uh... My biological parents would have wanted to be here to see this. Um... They... They served briefly on, uh... Deep Space Nine before it was destroyed. Um... He's kind of, you know, trying to recall it, but is, like, slow at telling the story. It's just... Um... My grandfather also served on the station. Uh, we managed to... leave before the station was destroyed, and, uh... My father and mother served on... another ship. I kind of forget the name at this point, but... Uh, they were killed in a transporter accident when I was about, um, I think at this point I was maybe 13 years old. And he sort of just pauses for a second. And, uh, eventually, I was taken in by a, uh, a Denobulan couple, of all things. And that's why I've sort of liked having Keevan here. He sort of reminds me of my adoptive father in a way. And they were the ones that inspired me to take a command track in diplomacy whenever I joined Starfleet. And I think that I would like to think that they're proud of me now and that my parents, wherever they are, are proud of me here. Well, I have no doubt they are proud of you, Captain. You've done some great things. And you came up with the idea of having the summit. I just took care of the logistical work. And you did... Well, it was... Well, it may have been my idea. You put it into practice um, a lot more effectively than I probably could have, and I appreciate your work in that regard. It's my pleasure being raised on a station. You get a respect for the comings and goings of people, and 
having a security background comes in handy when organizing events like this. You have a little bit more insight into the finer details of security protocols and traditions that everyone wants to exhibit. Um, I'm sorry that I came here to sort of, I don't know, vent. Haven't really had the time to think about them since I've gotten here. It's been a rush, and now that we're in another one, I haven't really had much of a break. I mean, look what's happened. <laughs> we haven't had a lot of good news around here in a very long time. The summit's a nice change of pace for us that it is well captain if you want a suggestion I would send a letter (laughs) I've actually been thinking about that probably have to go start on it well I might as well start now um thank you commander and he sort of just gets up to go and is brief, unless uh, the commander stops him. I'll just tell you, know, Captain, my office is always open. You know, we're, you are my commanding officer, but I'd like to think that we are friends. If you need to talk to anybody, this place is always open. I like to think the same as well, Commander. And he sort of just gives a small smile and... Uh, goes through the doors and he'll he'll start that letter. Sure. All right. Captain is heading up to do some writing. Anybody else have any necess- have any scenes they'd like to partake for the moment? Not particularly a scene, but I did want to do like uh, I'm checking in with all the uh, fleet captains to make sure everything is going smoothly and. Uh, they're still scheduled for arrival on time. Yep. Um, you are receiving no, uh, no dis- ah, no reports of disturbances of any kind. All the shuttles, awesome. all the ships are acting as normally. So we are. Uh, uh, uh Kevin, Dalrum, or not Dalrum, Demos. Anything on you guys before we move along? Uh, yeah, Demos would, uh, be calling Dura into his office. Okay. Uh, uh, someone can pick up Dura. I think we all know how she acts more or less by now. Yep, I can take her. Okay. Uh, security office. Here we go. Okay. I'll get the tokens ready if you guys can start the scene. Lieutenant Commander, you called me here? Uh, yes. And he's going to hand him a pad. He's like, this is all the information that I'm going to be giving you and the responsibility I'm going to be giving you. you and she, she'll take the pad and sort of start looking it over as you're talking. Uh, details everyone who's going to be assigned to what area of the station and what diplomat they will be with. Every diplomat will have a security personnel within a certain distance. They will be there just to render assistance, aid them in navigation, all that stuff. So I expect them to all be in diplomatic white uniforms. Of course, Lieutenant Commander. And they have a field leader they'll report to, and the field leader will report to you, then you report to me. But I want you to use your discretion and your judgment on any calls. If you feel it is too big of a responsibility, then get me. Of course. That's everything. Carry on. And good work so far. Thank you, Lieutenant Commander. Um, Should I be calling you Lieutenant Commander? Is there something else I should call you? Call me chief, call me sir, big metal man, I really don't care. And as she gets up to leave, it's just, eh, excuse me. So it's kind of like, be like, okay, big metal man, 
And she'll kind of wank and then just walk out. Second thought, don't call me that. I just weirded myself out. <laughs> As uh, Dora leaves, uh, Zyler uh, um, is about to wander in. Uh, he quickly passes Dora and says, Well, among us um, civ- among us uh, civvies, we refer to him as Mr. Roboto. Don't ask me. <laughs> it's some sort of human song from a while back. Kind of catchy. Also kind of disturbing. And, anyways, um, sorry, ma'am. And She'll just chuckle. Um, and he'll uh, chime to come into Demos' office really quick. Enter. Uh, Zyler, how are you doing today? Well, Chief, what would you like us uh, civvies to do? Well, you've seen what the civilians have been doing with the other security personnel. Basically, you're going to start pairing them up with other civilians. Uh, and he'll just rub it through a few pads like, wait, is it? Midas, where's the um, civilian? Oh, here it is. Never mind, Midas. There you go. So, the civilian side of things are going to be taking the position of the security that would be typically monitoring the cargo bays and the auxiliary shuttle bays. You will be responsible for these teams as well. You've been been showing promise. I have uh, also, once this is all said and done, I'm going to be submitting you, if you're up for it, a initial security Starfleet entrance examination to earn a field commission. I wasn't expecting that, sir, but thank you. Well, I've, you've been doing good work. All the reports I've seen have been very official. No doubt you get that from uh, your father. Both of them, actually. You'd be surprised how regimented a, hydro, on a, uh, a hydroponics bay requires one to be. Oh, no, I can imagine. Okay. Oh, and the civilian details will also be having more of a presence in the promenade as well. Uh, get with Reiner. I want you and him to work on a cultural package for the civilians. Have these handed out so they know uh, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. We don't need someone saying, hey, you look like a lollipop, and that's actually a very racial thing to say to someone. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. All the information's on that pad. If you need help, you can contact me directly, or Midas. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, thank yeah. you Chief Bot. Yes, he looks at Midas for that one. Myers just floats around and settles on the desk. Demos just pats him. And with that, he okay. turns and moses out. Midas, delegation. I don't have to worry about anything right now. I literally have no paperwork to fill out. He's going to put his legs on his desk and he's like, Rami, seal the doors. <laughs> <laughs> he's Mechanized just enjoying snoring. his break. <laughs> Mechanized snoring can be heard. <laughs> Okay. Anybody else want to do anything at this time? Uh, Keevan? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to actually... um, And I know we don't have a set for this, which is perfectly fine. I need to get all of the primary Starfleet engineering... um, My grunts all together, basically in a big... I think they prefer the term enlisted personnel, but okay. Hey, between you, me, and the wall, you know, just saying. Uh, that's not, and nope, that's the (laughs) Lunette's engineering bay. That's the wrong set piece. That's Uh, been a while. (laughs) It has been a while. Reactor, there we go. Close enough. Yeah, that'll work. Yep. Okay. Uh, What do you wish to tell? Does it still smell like Breen? No, long long gone, I'm afraid. (laughs) Darn, no Breen. Ugh. All right, Keevan. Okay, crew. We're going to probably be on a alert almost as much as the security forces are going to be keeping an eye on everything because we're going to have a lot of different people and a lot of different complications that are going to be coming up with these. There are several races, especially the Medell, 
that are going to need some special treatment, which we're going to have... Lieutenant Commander Demos came up with a great idea, so I'm going to need a team working on some pattern enhancers in certain main areas to be able to help out with being able to facilitate their easy access <laughs> to um, to different parts of the station. Sorry, I, I yeah, home giggled when you guys hit, yeah. when you put Homequist up there. I giggled. I mean, he does have that effect. Yes, he does. I'm going to actually try to get Maidloon to also assist, so I'm going to need a couple of volunteers to go into the AI core with Maidloon's permission to be able to um, help out with some of the um, different areas that we're going to, we might be needing to help out with. Maidloon, are you able to reach me? Okay, from where you're at? Always tied in, yes. Maylun, I know that the Zealous, they may be wishing to get a little information about the AI system, about Rami. I don't know how you feel about that. I want to be able to talk to you about that separately if you want, because they may inquire, they may try to come down to the AI core. I do not know yet. I'm going to try to see if I can talk to the captain to see what we can do to basically not make the AI core a walking, I don't know, zoo is the best word I have for it. Keeping it flooded helps. Well, you have to remember some of them might like the water, too, just like yourself, so... <laughs> Malin would bob his head. Entirely possible. But other aquatic species would be int would be interesting company. Well, if you would like some company, I will see if any of the delegates are wanting to possibly come down there, mm -hmm. especially if they want to also see another aquatic in a situation in which we have here on a fully functional station out on the edge, you know, doing the best work that I've seen in a long time. Uh, if you had a visual uh, link to Melun, you'd see uh, his flippers clap together kind of joyfully as he grins. Compliments are highly appreciated and will get you um, a special perk from Artif from Rami in the future. However, be sh however, since the incident, much of the uh, AI core has been deemed ca to be classif or to be uh, classified and uh, security related. Ensure that Demos has per has a uh, full understanding and grants permission as needed. Of course, I will definitely do that. Um, I definitely am going to want to see some other, some of the engineering personnel actually also interacting with some of the delegates that are there. Some of them may want to understand more about Federation engineering and whatnot and what we're doing here on the edge of the nebula. So, if, as long as you have respectable whites, and I don't mean ones that you've had in storage somewhere for two decades, I want good, clean whites. You know, I, I don't ask for much from you except for, you know, good work. I just want some cleanliness here, too, despite what we usually have going on here with engineering. Neil will just quickly raise his hands like already arranged for some meetings, sir. Yeah, good idea. Great idea. I, I like that in impulsiveness. I'm just saying It's kind of my job, sir. <laughs> I can also in the back of my head see Holmquist kind of rolling in his eyes, but I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've got about half a day to make sure that everything is set up as best as we can so just make sure take take breaks as you need them cooperate as much as you can i will be available and helping out anywhere that there's need today tomorrow the first couple of days of the conference i'm planning to be in dress whites and being out there with the delegates and talking with them so um nia i am actually going to probably want you 
to back me up in this at this time. No, I would be honored, sir. And you see he's already in, like, somewhat of, like, a diplomatic white uniform. But the one, like, personal touch to it is that you see, like, a small, like, pinstripe of Operations Yellow around the, uh, basically right around, like, the chest area. Nice, nice. All right. So well, let's get what we can done. Let's get everything together. Nia, you and I will talk later. Um, I have much faith in this crew. You guys have really started to show me everything you can ever since I've taken on as chief engineer, and I just want to see more of that today, especially when we've got the eyes of the peoples of the nebula, of the expanse, here, watching us. Dismissed. Good speech. Well, thank you, McCall. All right. Uh, last call for any scenes before we move on to the to the first uh, uh, folks arriving. Go away. I was gonna say I could do a family dinner with everybody with my family beforehand. Oh, I don't want to talk that much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I was just gonna you know touch base with everybody, oh. kind of how they were excited they were, but mm -hmm. no worries. <laughs> Fair enough. I will. We'll have to delegate certain family members to certain players in the future. We can take Indeed. that offline. Anyways, so we are going to cut to 0600 tomorrow morning. Bright and early in the morning. Apparently the Apollo is out and about. Demos is running. So, uh, the USS uh, Ro Roosevelt <clears throat> has returned from the area of the uh, uh, has returned from escorting the Rachi now a a um, ah, the Rachi now is a Kasala vessel uh, the the personal uh, diplomatic carrier of the ambassador uh, Menshal the the Rachi now requests either permission to dock or to do the transporter thing that you do. Which which way does the captain order? Um, uh, he'll what? just. No, sorry. I was just gonna say which cap. <laughs> captain of the station, Captain Crawford. I personally coming from the commander, like the idea of having them dock and greeting them in person instead of transporting and meeting them in that room. Very well. I agree. Okay, so we are going to cut to the airlock security station, which has been wonderfully rendered in Lego. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with Lego. Yeah. I'm assuming I like it. Yes, uh, I'm assuming Com Captain Crawford and Commander Dalrum are going to be there. Anyone else wishing to meet the ambassadors? Uh, Demos will be there. Demos. Okay, I'm going to try to keep these scenes fairly quick just because there is a heck of a lot of ambassadors arriving. But, and I don't want to spend all the time just playing meet and greet with all the species that I've made. Uh, Fair no, enough. But... So, uh, Ambassador Menshal appears, uh, walking through the corridor. Uh, she is a Kasala female. Uh, she has two long, uh, green-bladed swords uh, crossed across her back. Uh, she is a four-armed species. <clears throat> and uh, she has four bodyguards with her. I will pull up uh, for the non-humanoid species... I happen to have uh, species handouts that I will quickly display on stream for players who are interested. And that is what the Kasala look like. <clears throat> Ambassador. Uh, Ambassador clears the uh, security station. Uh, two of her bodyguards um, proceed through the door and flank the door for her arrival. And the ambassador crosses the, th the threshold. Ambassador Menshaw, welcome. Captain Crawford, 
It is such a pleasure to continue to wor work alongside the, fe the uh, Starfleet and the United Federation of Planets. Thank you for your invitation. You're quite welcome. I see that you managed to dock well. Um, was the trip over here fine? The trip was quite satisfactory, and the escort was a nice touch. I'm glad to hear it. She looks to the others. Uh, as her eyes linger on Demos before going to Commander Dalrum. You must be Commander Dalrum that we have that sent the initial invitation. Indeed, Ambassador. Welcome to Deep Space 15. We also call this place Cerberus Station. Uh, the uh, the um, reference obviously goes over her long, her elongated head, but she puts on a pleasant smile. Well, actually, she's unable to smile because you can't see her mouth. But she does nod and closes her eyes briefly. Hmm. I look forward to seeing where this summit of ours is going to go. Our, I take it from the lack of other vessels in the docking bay that we might be the first. You are certainly one of them, yes. Excellent. Ambassador, I'd like to uh, introduce you to Lieutenant Commander Deimos. He's our chief of security here. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Deimos, you don't need to roll inside security to recognize that the bodyguards, despite looking at ease, all of their limbs are tensed up and ready for action at a split second uh, response. Even Ambassador Menchal, despite the fact that uh, she also appears at ease, is oh is also fairly tense and ready to act. I greet you, Ambassador, and your bodyguards as well. While aboard this station, it is my responsibility to keep you and your men safe. You will also have an additional security escort following you as well. This is understandable. But I would like to make one thing clear. Those blades are only meant to be pulled out in self-defense. No hostile actions other than that. Lieutenant Commander Demos, these blades are uh, ceremonial as much as they are functional. They will not be drawn for any other purpose. Then you have my word, I'll keep you all safe. I trust you at your word. <clears throat> now, if we may see our quarters, uh, where we'll be staying, Commander? Captain? I... It sounds, it, my understanding is this um, is going to be a fairly lengthy ordeal, and I would like to take time to meditate. That is understandable. Our, this officer right here, I'll point to the security officer assigned to uh, the ambassador's entourage, will take you to your quarters. All of our diplomatic suites are on deck 77, um, and the, uh, the embassies are on the floor, the deck above. Once again, I thank you. And with that, they are going to head away. And in the interest of keeping things moving, we're just going to keep sh having the species arrive as they do. It's not long until the other ships begin to check in. And uh, ironically, the ones coming from the furthest away, the Le Chunt, are next to arrive. That would be these two. Walking through the corridors, um, a male and female. Uh, the, at first glance, they would be Andorian, except with um, beigeish brown skin and fairly long antennae. Uh, Emeretti Pleth is female with long, uh, flowing purple hair, and she is. Uh, she walks upright with a bit of an air of pompousness about her, whereas Emirati Garsal is a f older man who is hunched over on a fairly long staff topped with a um, wrath with a sculpture of their species uh, insignia on it. <clears throat> they both um, take stop. And Garsal is the one to speak. 
I bid you greetings. Yush. As a token of... As a token of... Ah. As a token of greeting, I offer you the knowledge that this nebula that you now call home has resided, or is expected to have lasted, for the past 4,284 years. It's a very interesting fact, Emirati. Um In Accustomed to You, I would also like to uh, extend our knowledge that the Federation, although it relatively young in its existence has well over 150 member worlds as well as multiple colonies and protectorates as well and we hope to extend our knowledge from the station to you their antenna uh, both sort of twirl in unison to each other must be some form of subvocal language that was not quite clear in the briefing uh, once again, pleasantries are exposed, or are exchanged, and they will move along. I'm just going to try to keep this part moving along, because I know that this could get a little drawn out if we roleplay each and every encounter. The more interesting... Um, next up are the... Uh, let's see. Next up, coming through the transwarp gate on one of their um, refurbished Oma, the, a.k.a. the Space Whales, are the Shobad Ne, a similar four-armed species. <clears throat> this would be Vect Haran, the Minister of External Affairs. Uh, he doesn't seem to be traveling with anyone. He just seems to wander... He comes in by himself. It is agreeable to see you again, Commander. Lieutenant it's Commander. Agreeable agreeable to see you again Vectoron. I hope that your travel was well indeed it is the it is admittedly the first time that we have been able to translate out of null space with one of our Oma your uh, Perseus crew has done a magnificent job in allowing us free transport through what was once an impenetrable blip, an impenetrable barrier I'll make sure to let Captain Crayon know that you complimented him and his crew. Uh, this is the security officer that we've assigned to you, uh, just as uh, a normal procedure whenever we have diplomats on board. Uh, we assign a crewman to escort them around, ask, be able to answer any questions um, for you, and they will take you to your uh, diplomatic quarters. Splendid. We look forward to uh, talking to you more during the summit. And I too. Also, the other Shobad Ne that were rescued, are they still on board? Indeed. Ah, excellent. I wish to learn about their experiences. I'm sure we can arrange that here for you soon. As he wanders away, you can't help but overhear him talking to the security guard. Wait, they've all decided to name themselves Steve? <laughs> and then they wander away. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Next up of uh, interest would be the Ulke. Uh, they arrive on a gleaming, pristine white, gold, white and gold cruiser of the Ulke Emirates. Uh, the this Prince Aksha comes through, and he is not alone, for he has... Oh, that's not quite right. Uh, he is surrounded by a harem of men and women, wearing just enough to be uh, decent for a PG-13 show. Uh, their skin is p pitch black... Uh, their eyes are deeply reset into their recessed into their skulls, giving them the appearance that they have uh, more hollow skulls than the, that of typical humans. Uh, they maintain a f uh, their teeth are pearly white, and they always seem to be smiling. Uh, they have a red; uh, their ridges are reddish and um, ah, are any are a monocolor, but 
on each one. They range from red to blue. He steps through. He is opulently dressed. Like the layers of gold cloth that are draping from him are enough to set off the uh, Ferengi's uh, senses from four decks away. Uh, <laughs> two of his harem are uh, ensuring that the robes do not touch the ground as he Im- uh, he walks up. Ah, well, this is a warm welcome indeed, my friends. Which one of you is captain? Uh, that would be me. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! He then... goes up and gives you a big hug. He kind of, you know, jumps on Star, but he does return the hug. It is an honor to meet you, Prince Aksha. It is a pleasure to be uh, recognized as a friend amongst new arrivals to this area of, of space. Now, please, accept the gift of one of my harem of your choice. Uh, um... <laughs> He was just thinks it's like, well, oh, date night's gonna have it for sure now. <laughs> <laughs> Dolromo smile and step in. Prince Aksha, it's a pleasure to meet you. I am Commander Dolrom. I've been the coordinator uh, that you've been taught that your uh, correspondence has been going through here on the station. He takes your hand in a double hand or clasps it in both and gives it a big shake. Ah, yes, Commander Dolrom, you are. Of a unique visage, I'd be very interested in learning more about your people. Now, I did bring enough to share. Would you like a uh, one of my harem as uh, for yourself? I do apologize, Prince. We mean no disrespect, but we don't uh, typically take uh, people as a gift. That's yeah. He sort of. He, his uh, expression darkens ever so slightly, and but that's quickly replaced by a big smile. Ah, just one of the many things that we have to learn about one another. Indeed, and that is the whole meaning of the summit, is to exchange knowledge of uh, those who, who are in the area, uh, as well as to possibly uh, negotiate treaties, negotiate trade deals, uh, and of course, share the knowledge of what the Federation has, but also of what all of you have to share with us. Well, if I hope I, for, I, on behalf of the Ulke Emirates, I hope that we can establish a well and a friendly and prosperous relationship together. And I as well, Prince Aksha. <laughs> Excellent. Now, please, it has been a long journey and I wish to uh, see what quarters I will be staying in, as he looks to Dolrum expectantly. That is understandable. Uh, I'll motion to the officer behind me. This is uh, the security officer that we've assigned to your uh, detail. It's routine procedure for us that whenever diplomats are aboard, that we assign an uh, officer to be their correspondence, their tour guide, uh, that... Uh, they can answer any questions, guide you around the station, uh, and they will be the ones taking you to your quarters. Excellent. I look forward to seeing you uh, all soon. The feeling is mutual, Prince. Okay, and with that, they vanish away. Yeah, once he gets on the site, Demos is just going to sigh. What's wrong, Demos? Is the matter? Well, we just missed a chance to get you a date tonight. <laughs> he's going to pull the pad and he's going to send a message to Zyler to make sure that there is a information guide sent to all the officers that are on guard uh, to know about any of the cultural habits as well and to turn down the offering of a harem. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good life choice. Uh, oh, the things you could have explored. Oh, well. Next up <laughs> is the... Uh, the Slipmere class that came from Iban with the uh, two familiar faces from the Ibani. Arch. Arxufris Firin III of the planet's uh, Kassaval Empire and Consulate Zarb of the um, uh, the Silatine, yeah, the Silatine 
alliance. Uh, our, the Fearon the Third is dressed head to toe in white that is that out out whites your dress uniform. <laughs> and Consulate Zarb is wearing uh, formal robes, or not a formal a formal suit, uh, emblazoned with several uh, f- several different insignia. Most likely those would be well. You've known them long enough. You know, recognize several member states' insignia represented across his uh, sleeves. You notice that they are keeping a respectful distance from one another. And there's a bit of a cold battle over who enters first. Eventually, Fearing the Third does. F- <clears throat> oh, mighty. Uh, oh, mighty Federation. We. We of the Casaval Empire th- do give thanks for your welcoming us on board your mighty station. We learn, we hope to impart, or we hope that you will impart some sacred knowledge upon us this day. You flatter us, Artsufus. Um, we can only hope that in exchange for some of the knowledge we give you, you give some to us as well. I fail to see what a civilization as humble as ours can provide, but whatever whatever we can do, or whatever we can give you, we offer it freely. Consulate Zarb then steps in front. He bows low. On behalf of the Silitun Alliance, I once again offer greetings, and again, thank you for what you have done to our uh, space program, uh, and in saving our planet from those cybernetic creatures. Katzler, it's Hi. great to see you again. He looks up. Uh, both of them quickly sort of stop dead after they've... You realize that they've stopped... Or they've finished their well-prepared speeches and they're now in the improv part of diplomacy. And they realize Demos is there. They see him and step back. That is not one of them, is it? No, Archcephas and Consulate. This is our Chief of Security. It's Lieutenant Commander Demos. Greetings. I am not one of those entities you had to deal with. I'm something else. A a friend. Splendid. And with that, they shall move on. You know... It's really surprising how so many people are kind of weirded out by me. I'm just saying you could have said that a little more robotically to them. That would have freaked them out. (laughs) Just don't start spouting the Borg. (laughs) Uh, Resistance is uh, palpable? No. What was it again? (laughs) Go with palpable. That'll get them laughing. Uh, so, Ambassador Cavus of the uh, Vitars Imperium, who had made a show, or who had slipped out two days ago, only to make a glorious return. She steps out and... Play the song. I hit the button to play the song. <laughs> the And a brassy version of the Vitars Imperium um, anthem uh, plays out over the uh, entryway as well as a few of the airlocks. She nods in appreciation. Captain, Commander, Demos, good to see you again. Likewise. Ambassador, it's always Likewise. great to see you. Got your favorite security detail here. Kevin's going to, you know, be your right hand man. Splendid. He has done such a wonderful job seeing to us in the past. I look forward. I look forward to seeing what these days are going to bring ahead. That's been the mutual uh, thought of all the uh, all of those that have arrived thus far. Everybody is excited for what can we can learn from each other and what can come out of the summit. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, friendships and new alliances. And right on her tail is the delegation from the Zealous. What wasn't yeah. mentioned was that Thriss is actually a small robotic 
sort of a brontosaurus dog type thing. Um, Cavus looks back at them, and they look at Cavus with a little, with, um, what's the phrase? Um, apprehension, and one of them reaches down to where a sidearm probably should be, but isn't. Cavus just says, ah, oh, they're here too. I'm not surprised. Captain Singral seemed to play favorites last time. Well, Ambassador, it's only fair that we invite every, all the representatives to the summit. Who knows? We might find a common ground. Well, we had common ground. They took it. And with that, she sort of moseys away. Nah. Demos just looks down to Dolor when Captain was like, you know, I actually know why all the ambassadors are very pleasant. Because I'm big. <laughs> you also never get to do your exact... day, Chief. You also aren't exactly movable, and I just try to push him, and he doesn't budge. Next up is the uh, Zealous. A these were once assimilated by the Borg. The Borg vanished, but the overruling AI that once governed their society took over. And it wasn't until they, some with some Romulan assistance, and assistance from the USS Nighthawk, that they were actually freed to go about their business. So, they are humanoid, but they're, rather than attempting to eliminate all of their clunky Borg implants, they've decided to streamline them, and use them to more like body art instead of garish clunky things i can hear deckard squeal squealing in science lab somewhere on the station they they come by and upon traditional uh, upon the greetings uh thris their dog immediately goes up and tries to jump at um midas <laughs> midas just floats to the ceiling Thrist lets out a small whimper. Oh, Demos is going to get down. I was like, hey there, little thing. Uh, do me a favor. Roll me uh, fitness plus security. Please. Fitness plus security. Difficulty, uh, of, uh, difficulty of one. All right. Do I need to have any focuses for this? Um, if you have, like... um. Like information security or something like that, that would work. No. <clears throat> ah. Ooh, well, you get uh, two momentum out of the deal. Uh, as soon as it touches your uh, hand, um, you detect a foreign program attempting to interface. You y you yank your hand back. And just as they do, th just as you yank your hand back, the both of the delegates immediately yell, Th Thriss, back! What have we told you about interacting with systems that are not of Zealous? <laughs> Apologies. Not only is Thriss adorable, it also likes to interface with systems and exchange data. It is how we control... It is how we... Pa uh, pass data from one system to another without having to rely on networks. Well, if I could make one suggestion, just be careful with our computer systems. We don't want any accidental programs engaging and viewing something as a mistake. Of course. Uh, Zam... Oh, sorry, go ahead. To say that being said, our hope out of, of this summit is that we can do some exchanging of knowledge. Agreed. We will we will, we shall um, refrain. We shall disable Thriss's automatic interfacing capabilities and ensure that Thriss is adorable only. Is completely understandable. Welcome to Deep Space Fifteen. Hmm. And with that, uh, here's your security guard. He'll show you around and be your liaison to the station. Splendid. Captain, we are most interested in exchanging information on your artificial intelligence routines. Uh, we are more than happy to share our mathematical theorems as well. 
Of course. <laughs> we have uh, received that request ahead of time. We've been talking with one of our officers who's actually in charge of the AI Corps uh, and have been working to schedule a meeting between uh, you all to be able to give some information back and forth. Splendid. We look forward to this. And with that, they are out. Moving on to the Togalau. A giant um, lieutenant dusk on the bridge reports that a large bio ship has entered the system. As it approaches the station, it immediately loses cohesion and fires a sort of a seed type pod to the uh, docking bay. It forms, uh, it is allowed in and upon entering the docking bay transforms into a humanoid creature that plods through security. Thankfully, the biohazard alarms do not turn on or cause any alerts. Greetings. We are a garden of the Togalau. Greetings, garden. I hope that your travels through space were pleasant. Indeed. Uh, solar radiation was quite amenable. The nebula was... or and our past experiences with the nebula have allowed us to further ro ah, further bolster ourselves against its negative influences. Well, that is great to hear. I look forward to what we can learn from each other here in the coming days. Yes. The t the t the garden in or this garden is uh, this garden is eager for knowledge as well. Uh, it has been... Uh, we have had a representative on one of your star... On uh, one of your other gardens. They have taken to call it Togi. Should you wish, <laughs> this garden will respond to that name as well. That is not what we wish, it is what you wish. I currently have no wish except to observe, communicate, and learn. Then we'll just simply call you Garden. Very well. It'd be green. All right. So he is now known as Garden. <clears throat> and with that, he is off. Dormer will look to the captain and Damus. By my count, we have three left. I was actually surprised that the Zealots didn't want to take me apart here. Kind of a little sad about that, actually. Oh, uh, the night is... The summit is still young. Mm. Okay. The Medel arrive, and the Medel are jellyfish-style... are basically intelligent jellyfish... Each one is roughly three feet tall, so they're still sizable. Um, I have a reference picture to show people, which is here. Nope, that's the wrong one. This is the right one. And they are, and they arrive in. Um, they are very much aware of the requirements to travel around station. Uh, so they, it's either they or one of their friendly species has devised them a transport um, environment, which is a box that is roughly three and a half feet by five feet and is on a hover or a zero-g hover plate that allows it to move slowly, but at least stably. They... Uh, as they're getting in, I'm pulling the security guard that we have for them. Mm -hmm. I'm showing them on a pad the current location of the um, the Kasala, mm -hmm. and I'm telling them like you take them around this way, and make sure that the junction point is double force field, and it has two people staffed there at all times on either side. Mm -hmm. uh, GM interjection: These are not the people that the Kasala hate. No, these are not the uh, Nalu. Nope. nope, these oh, are the Medel. Medel are the jellyfish oh, okay. people. The Nalu are the Naga. We'll get to them momentarily. Uh, okay, my bad. 
Trailing behind them, also on a fairly large anti-gravity uh, pad, is an aquarium filled with a great number of uh, fish and by uh, fish type species. Um, they their speaking is more or less them flashing different colors and patterns, and then the box translating for them. Greetings, Captain. Greetings, two-legged species. Well, we uh, we give thanks for your invitation. Greetings, and thank you for coming here to share information with us in the first place. This is. Uh, there's a bit of awkward silence as they try to process what to say. May we see where where the, our shop is to be set up? The fish that we wish to sell and the uh, our goods to sell. We would like to get started. Of course. And he'll obviously have a security officer. Uh guide them to where they're being set up and I think we'll just put them in the location that they asked for in the first place rather than being right by the Ferengi. Fair enough. Um, not uh, three or not ten meters away from where you hand them off to the security officer. One of the um, the Ferengi known as Pex intercepts them and begins making um, mercantile overtures. I, I pat one of the other security. Like, just get him out of here for now. Diplomatically, get him out of here for now. Very well. Okay, so. Next up is the half human, half scorpion. And if only. Ga or half scorpion creatures known as the scorpion. If only Galen was here to see them. Because they're finally live and in person. <clears throat> they're fairly large individuals, and they have to make their way through the narrow corridor single file. Um, High Proctor Weakus, a, a fair skinned individual with a brown scorpion carapace a lift, and a top hat, as shown, is leading the three of them. And lifts it. Greetings. I, be, I so thank you for allowing us on this station. I do feel that there's a great deal of stuff we can learn from one another. I'm in agreement, High Proctor. It's a pleasure to have you here. Ah, yes. Might I introduce my watcher, Cathrice, and the technocrat and representative of our uh, engineering guild, Mr. Ovis. Mr. Ovis, I believe um, one of our engineering officers, uh, Specialist Neo, would actually like to meet with you. Indeed. I certainly would like to get a further uh, hands-on experience with your elaborate technologies. There's so much that we could learn from your more robust ship designs. Ours, our, en our tachyon engines are very efficient. However, we don't seem to be able to achieve any faster than your Warp 5. I'm sure with some help we could maybe help you improve on that. Indeed. And with that, I should mention that Cathrice has a mechanical hawk on her shoulder. Ooh. Are any of them armed? Uh, Cathrice has a long pole arm um, are halberd style things strapped to her carapace. The other ones do not have any weaponry. I'm just gonna have the security officer like, like tell her that needs to stay in the diplomatic suite at all times. Mm-hmm. Copy that. Okay, last but not least is now these guys just showed up. They decloaked at the nebula and have made their way in. Ambassador Sem Lee of the Nalu, a.k.a. a serpentine aquatic species, um, which looks something like this. Uh, 
um, even even before she makes uh, uh, she makes her presence felt as a field of uh, bioelectricity just sort of causes your nerves to tingle ever so slightly as she approaches uh, she come um, at f full head to tail she would be about eight feet long however just due to the amount of her that's standing upright she only comes to about five foot uh, her eyes glare at you with uh, pulsing blue energy captain crawford i have heard or we have heard much about you the fathomess of the nalu extends her greetings and please extend my greetings to her as well ambassador uh stemley was it correct that is correct yes it's a pleasure to finally have you here on the station. Indeed. And he kind of looks towards the bodyguards. How tall are these bodyguards? Because they uh, look pretty massive just they, looking at the photo. Yes. Uh, each one stands about eight uh, stands at eight feet tall. And mm -hmm. each one has a large trident. Um, and because they are known to the uh, Federation, the the female species has um, been noted to have a degree of psychic presence and the males do not the males seem to have some sort of bioelectricity which could somehow be used as a weapon if necessary gotcha. this is obviously a very matriarchal matriarchal society mm -hmm. he kind of you know looks up up at one of the bodyguards just like kind of whispers and Ambassador Semley will probably hear him. It's like, we're not one to get in a fight with one of those guys. Demos just looks down at him. <laughs> Ambassador. Yes. This is a liaison slash security officer that will be helping you and assisting you around the station. Mm -hmm. I do have one request as per as the information we have of your species. If you could limit your psychic abilities, we do have children aboard the station that may be too sensitive to it. I shall endeavor to make that a, a reality. However, so long as I'm not provoked, that is. Um, out of curiosity, um, Dolrum or Demos, the security attaché you're assigning them, male or female? Uh, since the bodyguards are intimidating, it's actually a male and female. Ah, one of each. Cool. <clears throat> As, uh... For, yep, go ahead. And for your bodyguards, their tridents. Can they be left inside the ambassador's suite? Or are they a ceremonial type thing? They're not ceremonial, they're functional, so long as everyone else plays by the rules of this soiree, then, our tri then I will make a show that the Nalu are as interested in seeking friendship with everyone else as, and uh, order them to leave their weapons behind. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you. It is my responsibility to make sure that everyone aboard the station is safe, and I will offer the same protection and guarantee to you and your bodyguards. Very well. And she looks at her attaché, uh, the female one. Now, please take me to my, please take me to our suite. I trust that our biological needs are, or that the environment is set up precisely. At which point the attaché will go into great lengths as they head down the corridor. And I believe that is all of them. Unless anybody else random wants to show up, that is everybody on the list. You hear the sound of metal hitting the wall. <laughs> it's just Demos' his head. <laughs> you okay, you no, Chief? Chief? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wasn't... I was never the diplomatic one. But. Well, you're on a station in a part of space where we'll be encountering new things. You might want to start getting used to it. Well, maybe. <laughs> uh, 
Lieutenant Dusk to Captain Crawford. Go ahead, Lieutenant. I recommend that you... Go if you're all done greeting everyone down there, could you please report to Transporter Room 1? He kind of raises a curious eyebrow. Um, An uninvited guest has decided to make their appearance known. And he kind of lets on an exasperated side and just kind of asks, Q? Thankfully, no, sir. It's the Draven. Hmm. On my way. All right. Anyone else wish to go to the transporter room? I will. Dean was well. <laughs> all right. Keevan, sorry about leaving you out and about for this. No, you're all. No, it's all good. It's all. It's giving me ideas. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> uh, trans... That could be a terrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Okay, we are in the transporter room. Wow, it's been like ever since we've used this set. Okay. <laughs> oh. It's it's been a minute. Yes, yes, it has. Okay. You wander in. Uh, there are two security guards currently pointing or currently restricting Belthier Void Runner. And hey, my boy. Two of his sisters, or I should say one of his sisters and her clone. <clears throat> uh, Belthier, upon seeing the captain, tries to take a step, or grins sort of friendly and menacingly. It's hard to tell with them man with red eyes <laughs> and he tries to stake a step forward but the security guards are encouraging him to stay back ah, Captain Crawford do you really think you'd throw a, sh a party on their station invite everyone and just leave me out of it? Nah Captain we're far too we're far too good friends to know better I must admit that your uh, your presence is a little bit unexpected. Um, he'll kind of go aside for just a second. Uh, Crawford to Lieutenant Dusk. Dusk here, sir. Did we pick up any Draven ships before they transported in here? Uh, that's my fault, sir. They snuck in behind all the dead spores left behind by the Togalau. Was really good masking trail. I'm going to have to real just the sensors to pick up their ship better not entirely sure how they transported sir they didn't have that technology last time i saw them i see demos is going to replace the security guard keeping him back very well balthier if i may ask um how did you transport here well, I must admit, the first few attempts of the system were difficult and a little messy, to say the least. But my dear sister Zilla, even though she's a little socially maladjusted, is brilliant. Uh, he turns back, and one of the clones has already begun looking at the wall and attempting to try to tear off one of the panels. Hey, no. She turns around, Demos! And she immediately sprints and gives you a big hug. Okay, what did I say about trying to get on our panels? You need to ask permission first. He's just going to give her like a one-armed hug and pat her head. Will you let me inside your panels this time? Hey, yes, yeah. nicely, maybe. <laughs> Please. We'll see. Hey! Yeah. <clears throat> Balthier just sort of shakes his head, um, uses the opportunity of um, Zilla hugging Demos to do a graceful sidestep, just sort of outside <laughs> Demos's reach. Captain, if if you insist, the Draven request permission. Uh, the Draven of the Void Runner Clan requests permission to join this peace summit thing that is currently being hosted by the Federation. And again, there's that... It's sort of like a Garrick smile. That's sincere, yeah. but... Mm. Sincere, but also have scheming. Oh, oh yes, that's Belthier for you. 
I feel like Balthiel is like a Ferengi and a Cardassian and a Romulan Telechar agent had a child and that's him. <laughs> yeah. Quite possibly. You never know. Right. <laughs> and I would gladly welcome you, Balthier. Now. And he'll kind of walk up and put like, you know, a warm arm around his shoulder. How has your mission of mercy been going? Ah, uh, splendid, actually. We have a why not five uh, weeks ago? Why not? Eh, why not five days ago? We were down on a planet surface rescuing a group of Ulkir or Ulke uh, mining cast members from a collapsing mine. It was a bit touch and go due to the volcanic activity here, uh, Zilla. He gestures back. My dear sister had to quickly figure out the, how to counteract the ever. Sh or the ever worsening tectonic somethings of a planet. I don't really know the words, but eh, she's far smarter than me. Of course, I they, see. of course, they repaid us handsomely for our efforts. So not only did we save their life, that we made a tidy profit, which could only, of course, be spent into bettering our ship. <clears throat> of course, and if you like, um. Let's go to the bar on this station, the Eclipse. We we need to catch up. Absolutely, Captain. I look forward to hearing all your stories. And I look forward to hearing yours as well. I like how this unlikely friendship is going. It's awesome. Okay. I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love him when he has a knife in your back, too. Ah. <laughs> uh. A2, Balthier. A2. <laughs> okay. And so, uh, with that, all the species are in place, and I get to roll the first random diplomacy um, roll, just to see how people get along. And apparently, the Silicon Alliance <laughs> and the Federation, something has happened. Uh, what has happened, I will leave up to the players to figure out or talk about if they wish. Oh, my. But... So apparently, you guys aren't on as good a strong footing as you thought. Uh, where are they? There they are. <laughs> cool. So, uh, we're approaching two hours, and we're going to get back into the roleplay. Sorry, something big and heavy just landed on my roof. Eh. Power still on. It's we're still Santa kicking. Claus. Mm. Sure. Um, so let's take a um, let's take a ten minute break. Uh, take refill bio and stuff. So let's get back here five to the hour. Sounds okay. good. So, Sounds uh, good. Aye, aye. I will see you guys shortly.
And we are back. So, all the guests have arriving, and the next scene finds it in a finds us in a bar. It is quite a mixture of people this time of night. Everyone is attempting to well, all the species that wish to be social are here. All the species who don't wish to be social obviously aren't. Um, the captain and Balthier Void Runner are, of course, catching up on their exploits. Uh, where's all the characters? Here they are. <clears throat> there we go. Captain Crawford. Ooh, one is far bigger than the other. I wonder why that is. I'll have to look in that later. I have to establish dominance. Seemingly. <clears throat> uh, and now, as uh, Belthier just, uh, the scene turns to you, turns to the pair of you guys, as he slams back a drink, laughs, and says, so there's actually a circus, or there, there's actually an entertainment vessel out there somewhere that tries to mind control people to get them to join their crew? There is, yes. Ah! And you like this place far too much to join it, huh? I guess you could say that, yes. <laughs> ah. Uh. So. Um, Mazzy Perrick is busy serving drinks. Once again, Nia is at the bar, much like uh, Morn. I like how he's just a permanent <laughs> fixture at this set. We're just not moving him. Yeah, pretty yep. much. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Keevan, let's say that you, uh, you, Demos, or you and Demos, and one of the uh, zealous ambassadors are sitting down and talking technology. Ele Elix is attempting to figure out how Demos's brain works. Wow. You know, Alex, in general, I've even been trying to figure that one out about how Demos' brain actually works. Oh. Well. How to describe it here? The technology to replicate it here doesn't exist yet, nor does the technology to make the technology exist yet. I'm a special case, Alex. I'm from an, an alternate reality. Uh, the theory is that when we attempted what the Federation calls a geodesic fold is the intersection of a quantum fissure must have occurred and it tossed us out into a rogue star in this universe. That rogue star was already past what is referred to as some barrier. Took a few years to get back and unfortunately the barrier it really messed up the ship I was on. Uh, as for my brain, it operates off of a subspace pocket dimension that's created to store all the information. It allows a replication of the human brain. Uh, particularly mine is a generation three. So my brain is copied from that of a once living person. I used to have flesh, blood, all that. So that's why I have those little weird ticks and habits, like licking my thumb, uh, scratching my cheek. It's all sensations I still have. Fascinating. If I, what would happen if I were to say, suggest that you have an itch on your ear that currently isn't that may or may not be there? Does that subconsciously generate the urge to scratch your ear? Yes. Uh, it's so. Uh, the best way to describe it is generation ones were a scan of a brain upload into what you'd call hard drives, basically computer storages aboard a vessel, um, compressed down. But it wasn't the person. They kept running into a hard wall. Once they were duplicated in this manner, they weren't able to grow. They couldn't perceive growth outside of what they've already learned. And that's when the Gen 2s came in. The Gen 2s were the actual brains in a casing into the body. 
the subconscious went mad, and a lot of them didn't make it. Gen 3s, me, we have the urges, sensations, habits to keep our subconscious happy. So I get a cold every now and then. I get an itch. Uh, sometimes I think I hear things, you know. Uh, I'm even programmed uh, in such a way that when I walk through a doorway, I will forget what I was about to do. And other features are part of my function as well. Fascinating. Demos, one of these days, you and I are really going to have to take a deep talk about that brain of yours. Just because I'm even finding it a little fascinating. That makes gets, gives me an idea about something. But we'll deal with that later. Well, I was told by someone named Barkley once that uh, apparently my brain is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. <laughs> I have no idea what he tried to mean there, but... He was ecstatic to look at the readings. Zilla comes in behind and says, Ooh, bigger on the inside. Ooh, who's your green friend? Hi, my name's Zilla. What's your name? And if uh, the Zealous could blush, he would be blushing. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll let them talk to each other. Like, okay, well, take care of that. Yeah, let's take our exit. <laughs> hey, keep on. Yes, Demos. Do uh, you have any kids? Saying Denobulin has kids is like asking if the captain needs a date. Yes. I'll look over at the captain like, I think he's on one right now. Maybe. Are you going to tell him that? <laughs> I'm not on duty. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I think we were planning to get him a date with the uh, area at one point. But yes, to answer your original question, I do have kids i have family i mean i'm part of a large family it's just you know when you get to be seven decades old you kind of you know people kind of space get spaced out both physically and literally so you know we're kind of around here you miss them i mean our my society is just it's all about connectivity so yeah, I miss them on occasion. It's just, it's... My parents, you know, the ones that brought me up, they really didn't... They thought that I was going to go into the family business of doing the manufacturing and whatnot, and it... Uh, I kind of think a few of them, you know, even my, especially my father, might have gotten a little... What's the word I want to use? Under underappreciated me once I started looking at things more technically as opposed to financially or you know stuff like that but you grew up on beta Z too I mean you can't just not look at the world and think there's more to life than just making a product so yeah And as they continue the conversation, in walks Commander Dalrum and his husband, Apatu. Uh, Apatu, how was I supposed to know that the Silatine Alliance would have a massive allergic reaction to the biscuits? I thought that the... I thought that the herbs were perfectly safe for all humanoids. I'm gonna wave over to uh, Apatu and Dalrum. They... Apatu waves back, grabs Dalrum by the hand, and sort of encourages the direction that the commander goes. Well, uh, Commander, Apatu. Hello, how are, is everyone doing tonight? Oh. Things are Thinking going about... pretty well. 
you know, we're yeah. having people pick our brains as we're trying to figure out Demos's brain. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. It, uh, don't even try to figure that kind of stuff out. Uh, Actually, the... that, not that bad once you understand uh, quantum physics and quantum mechanics and uh, cyber netics and subspace tunneling. That requires an understanding of all of that, and that was just gibberish to me. <laughs> you know, there's, there's actually one more element to it, but I can't say it without ruining everyone's day. Actually, Commander, um, Demos was actually just bringing up something about family, and, you know, for somebody like me, that's sometimes a sore subject, but, you know, we're, we're just we're just chatting about family. I mean, we are kind of gelling together more as a family here on the station after, you know, six of one and half a dozen of another race is trying to do this, that, or the other to us. Yeah, we've come together pretty well as a family. And then you have us that actually have our family here and wonder why the heck do we endanger them some days. Demos is just going to look down and let him a small sigh. Like, yeah. I believe it's for the adventure. I mean, that's why even, you know, people, even Dr. Crusher had brought her son initially onto the Enterprise D. I mean, I know there was a whole history between Beverly Crusher and Jean-Luc Picard and all that, but, you know, that, that kid was something, something else. Indeed he was. Well, and we've gotten lucky with our kids. Yeah, that you have. I, I've noticed them around. I mean, I don't. It takes me a while to really get to open up to some people. I know that seems weird for a Denobulan, but I've had some dealings in the past that have kind of burnt me a little bit, but that's for... I look over towards Mazzy, and I'm like, um, wait, like wriggling a finger towards him to kind of like a signal like yeah give me something strong uh mazzy pulls away from uh his current clientele a lieutenant junior grade klein and mr nia uh he pours uh something blue into a glass and waves one of his uh servers down to bring it to you yeah sometimes just yeah that's that's all I'm going to say about that right now. Maybe after after a few more. And I take that drink and I very quickly do down it in one gulp. Careful there, Lieutenant Commander. Uh, meanwhile, there, there's a brief commotion at the other end of the bar as Balthier gets up, uh, wanders over to uh, his sister... Uh, grabs her by the scruff of the collar and pulls her off uh, Alex. How many times have I told you do not interface without their permission? But he was going to give me something good. Like, Do you know how much knowledge is picking around inside that brain? They have an AI! An absolute A! Like They have a full AI throughout their entire system. We could learn more about their artificial intelligence if we just go to the Zell systems. We don't need to be here to examine the Rami system. That's too well guarded anyways. And Balthier just says, or anyone paying attention would notice Balthier's eyes glare at Zilla. Not now. Let's go home, sister. You've had too much to drink. Demos is just going to look at one of the security. He's like, make sure they get home fine. they nod knowingly and fall into line to ensure that the Zilla is escorted back to her diploma her impromptu diplomatic quarters Balthier then turns to the captain Captain Crawford it has been a delightful a delightful evening as always as uh, I look forward to seeing you bright and early tomorrow morning for the start of the talks rest assured and he 
does a um, quick uh, uh, gesture to show show off his uh, ratty clothing. I have far much, far more formal attire than what I'm currently wearing. And I look forward to it as well, Balthier. Uh, he sort of gives a small cheeky wink and a grin as they exit out. And at this point, the uh, I would assume the camera sort of hands back over to uh, Mozzie and Lieutenant Junior Grade Klein and he kind of leans in and says to Mozzie, he's just like, so, um, other than those individuals, uh, any of the new people seem sort of shady, out of place to you? (sighs) Any any number of these could pose a problem. Uh, the only ones we can probably really trust are the Kasala. Uh, Captain Singral's report on them seemed to be above board. And the, the Scorpi weren't on the nicest of terms after the captain literally transported their high proctor to his ship without permission. Could be holding a grudge. Don't know enough about their species, though they seem friendly enough. Well, well, and of course, you know, apparently the Silatine the Silatine ambassador is allergic to parsley. Who knew? Seems like a menial thing to be allergic to. Guess they don't have it on his home world. I have no idea what they do for seasoning without it. Uh, parsley is more of a decorative thing anyway. Yeah, maybe that's why they don't. Can, maybe that's why they don't consume it. Maybe they actually have some sense and just leave that alone. Another drink, my friend? I could certainly use it. Very well. He'll slide you, some, he'll slide you something that looks stronger than it actually is. One intelligence officer to another, of course. Of course. <laughs> and he'll kind of sip it and he'll kind of wander over kind of in the direction of Alex. He'll probably stand on those stairs that are just to the right of where Alex is. Mm-hmm. Just so he can kind of get an observation point towards uh some of the other senior staff's table and just sort of watch. As Klein tends to do. Yep. Dorum's going to go up and take a spot at the bar. Maybe a patu with him. Ah, uh, if it isn't the commander that organized it all, what what can I get you tonight? His smile beams. Oh, just the usual, Mozzie. Oh, just the usual. On a night like this? Well, look around you. Places brimming with, spe- with species that have never once set foot on Federation space. Some of which he even haven't had any interactions with the Federation other than this. Well, then I'm glad I'm doing my part to ensure that they have a good first experience. As he pours your favorite brandy, passes it your way. Well, Mozzie, uh, the station's only as strong as the, as the bartender. Well, and you better believe that a bartender is only as strong as his strongest drink. And thanks to Master Chief Ember, he sort of touches his the top of his head in a sort of a ritualistic salute. I'm the strongest one around. Fair enough. And I tip my drink to him. So, how how's business been? Oh, you know, it's been busy. You know, just don't don't uh, ah whatever is spoken about on the in the diplomatic room floor is nothing compared to the deals that are going on here right now. As he points across to where um, the uh, one, ah, where Alex is meeting with Ovis of the Scorpi. See, those two never even I don't even believe that their species knew that one another existed until th- this very day. Now that they do, well, they're both t- technologically minded, even though they're very different. 
but they'll learn more from one another after a couple drinks of liquid encouragement. I've had to talk to um, our chief medical officer to see what sort of alcohol might work for the Scorpy. I think I've come up with a couple ideas. Always ahead of the game, Muzzy. Gotta be. One of the Ferengi rules of acquisitions. Improve or die. Or expand or die, I should say. Fair enough. <laughs> What's good on the menu tonight? <sighs> well, order something now. I'm. The replic our uh, replicator stores aren't going to last forever with this amount of demand. How's the meatloaf the tonight? Juicy and tender, just how you like it. I'll take it. A Don't... patu, what do you want? Oh, I will have something vegetarian, perhaps. Right. Vegetarian Alfredo for you, and meatloaf for the commander. Slides you both plates of food. Neil will sort of just, probably at this point, semi-drunkenly wave at both of them from across the bar. Hey. Or just goes, oh boy. What's up, Nia? Oh, just, you know. And he holds up one of the glasses that he has. Did you and Vayne get in another fight? Oh, no, it's just, it's been great. Just needed to drink a little bit. Uh, sometimes having a symbiote isn't as great as some people might think it is. Knowing past lives is... It's not fun. Well, if it, if it helps, you can go see a counselor. Maybe clear your head a little bit. Yeah, but sometimes drinking a lot makes them... Makes this, uh... Makes it shut up for a bit. It helps. <laughs> Just so long as you're good for duty tomorrow. Oh, don't worry. I'm pretty sure this is sent the hall, so I should be fine. I just side-eyed Mozzie. <laughs> Mozzie's like... Mozzie gives you a small wink and a th thumbs up beneath the bar. Fair enough. Take care of yourself, Nia. Yep. And he'll just drink down another one of the glasses. Uh, well, Chief. Go ahead. I propose a, I propose a toast to you, Chief. To our children. Wherever they are, whatever they're doing, may they always come home safe. To our children. Uh, Demos is just going to hold up his little shot glass. He's going to put it down. He's going to get up. I'll see you later. Take care, my friend. And he is going to head... Uh, he's just going to sit down in the promenade. Just watch the people. Alright. Uh, the the Medell store has is attracting a, a decent amount of traffic, this even this late at night. Uh, exotic, uh, exotic live, uh, f exotic live fish and other seafood, uh, totally compatible with most humanoid taste buds or in digestive systems. There's a, um, a medical, uh, there's a medical personnel scanning each one of the fish as it swims through the aquarium, double checking that yes, indeed, they're uh, claims are true. The Medell seem to be allowing it. Hmm. He's just going to people watch for a while. All right. And we are going to people watch ourselves into tomorrow. Where it is the first opening day of the... <clears throat> of the... Ah, what, there's my mouse. And what we see is Captain Crawford along the table with all with 
representatives from all of the invited species. Does anybody else wish to attend or be present? I imagine all senior staff will be at the initial opening of the summit. Very well. Uh, Demos won't. He's going to be busy organizing everything else. Okay. Would we do it at, around the table or would we do it at the podium? Uh, it would be... Uh, probably at the podium would be best, but all the chairs are too close together to actually put all the tokens there. So we'll just put Fair. the captain there. Captain is here. Okay, Captain, I believe you have a speech for this. I do. Give me just one second here. Okay. To species new and old to this station, welcome to Deep Space 15. In conjunction with my first officer, Commander Dolrum, we welcome you to the Lisi Expanse Political Summit. Our hopes with this summit is to bring species from both the Federation and the Lisi Expanse together and share information while also getting to know each other as individuals. We are all exploring space in our own ways, and I see no reason as to why we should have to do that alone. So please, eat and drink of the delicacies of the different cultures here today, and take this time to both socialize and learn from those unfamiliar to you. I look forward to talking with some of you individually and hope that this summit is successful with your help. He'll just... there's, a, there's a polite sm splatter of applause. A couple of <laughs> uh, cheers. Is, and to, the, to, yeah, the garden is confused at the clapping and attempts to mimic it even though no sound emanates from its padded gloves. And with that, the peace talks, or the talks, get underway. And there is absolutely no way as a GM I'm going to roleplay a peace talks, because... Yeah, no. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. So, <laughs> why, um, does anybody have any scenes they wish to do adjacent to ongoing negotiations? Or shall we just do scenes that are, you know, whatever you guys wish to do? Because this is now pretty much your, it's pretty much your thing now. Right. Um. Just remember, complaining about dress uniforms is always a good way to start conversations. Of course. <laughs> um, I believe. Uh, let's do a scene between uh, Nia and Kivon, because that's. Okay. That sounds fun. Where would this be? Um, I would assume at this point, since they're probably both intermingling with some of the other species, probably either like the promenade or maybe just some random hallway on the station. Okay, we'll just say that for the moment they're on the top floor of the diplomatic lounge, watching the proceedings okay. below. There is Nia, and there is Keevan. So, Keevan, there's a specific reason that you had uh, me chosen to be in this getup as he's kind of, <laughs> you know, maybe trying to loosen the collar of his diplomatic uniform a bit. I would normally say that if I got to do it, you got to do it. However, honestly, I've seen quite a bit of you and your ability since I've been here on station, especially as chief engineer. And, you know, I think a little cultural diversity might not be a bad thing. That's certainly true. All the work I've done here, I'm surprised I haven't earned a promotion at this point. Well, that may be coming down the line. You, you gotta remember one thing. It's just some people are still I don't know maybe this is just my interactions with people but sometimes some people are leery about trills especially young trills I mean as far as I can tell I've never really discussed much about your 
history, but I know that you are fairly young as a Trill, so, I mean, maybe not enough experience. You know, some people still will always have prejudicial thoughts and feelings about other people. I mean, look at this. We're right outside of a Borg transwarp conduit that, you know, some people would think we're absolutely bonkers. I mean, have we seen the people in charge of Starfleet? Not too surprised. <laughs> uh, well, yes. However, I think that you, you've got a really good place in Starfleet, or whatever you plan to do, whatever you would like to do. I, I see this in you, and I think that with all these ex you know these expanse races that are here you know we've already gotten you know demos and i were already talking to um i just blanked out on their name the zealous thank you yes the zealous we were just talking to the zealous last night one of the zealous and just just in that little interaction you know demos and i are going to be having a longer conversation about other things about himself and maybe something about myself as he mutters that under his breath and it's just a matter of we have to be more culturally accepting of other people I mean believe me I'm a Denobulan that grew up on Beta Z in the family business which I didn't take off on you know we all have to find our own way right Well, I appreciate that you even considered me in the first place, considering that well, as an enlisted officer rather than someone who has a commission don't really have much pull around here. Let me remind you of one famous name. Miles O'Brien. Was he an enlisted was was he an enlisted officer? Well, I mean, he was, but... Yeah. Didn't he have a commission at one point? He did, but I mean, for the most part, I mean, he was a non-com. He was chief. He was Chief O'Brien. You know, it doesn't matter where you come from or what you do. You know, he has done more for engineering second only to Montgomery Scott and maybe on a cursory side Bruce Maddox when it comes to cybernetics because you just have to be able to be aware of what's going on and be able to see things a little differently than other people it's not easy I don't even do a great job of it you know I try to do the best that I can but you always have to look at little things oh that's true, I guess. No, yeah. like I haven't heard that talk about O'Brien before. You know, it's all about confidence. Jaron, you know, you just have to be confident with yourself. You know, I, I know I was getting a little inebriated last night. Just know that there's more to life and more to this experience than what is right at the skin deep, right right at this top. You know, there's always something to break down deeper in there. You know, if you want, if you want some additional help on anything, I'm more than willing to help out. I appreciate it, but uh, he kind of looks around at some of the. Uh... Man, we've gotten uh, a couple of the other ambassadors up here with us oh yes N nobody expect no one expects all the oh i'm sorry you're not talking about uh, you're not needing gm input i apologize i'll shut up <laughs> yeah i mean you know look at this these are people that may or may not have interacted with each other but you know they are they're doing this here i mean look down below we've got uh, the zealous that is talking to our AI. 
are artificial intelligence here, and they're talking to her. And I mean, who who does that? No, I mean, not a whole lot of people, but he's kind of like you know flipping that experimental device that he's always had kind of over in his palm. Jaron, if I can leave, I'm gonna. I'm, I I I want to see you improve. I want to see more from you. I'm gonna leave you with this little thing, and I can't believe I'm actually going to quote him. The easiest thing you can do in life is to quit. The toughest thing you can do in life is challenge the norms. My father used to tell me that all the time. Who in the world was your father? Just a, you know, just a working man from Denobula A. You know, I I don't talk about much about my family, but you know, they're still there for you if you need to. Right. All right, let's. I think I should get. I see Commander Dol Dolroma down there. I might have to get have a word with them. But well, too late. Looks like he's found you. I just went. Oh, hello, gents. I'm gonna do one thing really quick with that two momentum that we've had that we haven't spent yet. Okay. Um, just for fun, I'm just going to create the advantage using my uh, experimental device to change Rami's image to uh, let's let's make her look like Mei Loon, just for funsies. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So as Rami and um... It's quite simple how my algorithms work. See, I am just a, uh, I am just a representative of the computer core, whereas I've. <laughs> I imagine during all this stuff, there, Demos has put programs to watch any alterations to software. Yes, especially with the cell. Um, yeah. So there. Does he get an alert? Yes, he would. <laughs> now, how easy is it to detect who put that in there? Um, roll, roll. I uh, mean, let's. I'll, nope, I'll roll a task to co like cover his tracks. He's sure. He's let's. Prepared. Yeah. So let's roll. Um, insight, or yeah, roll me. Um, control plus engineering versus. Or so. G Nia will roll control engineering and um, Demos will roll insight security and this will be an opposed roll. Since since nothing's gonna matter too much this session, I'm gonna pop his determination of any machine as my plaything. Okay. Uh, that I'll give you an extra free die. Or no, you get the two bonus. Two successes. Fair enough. Yeah. Oh my sweet Jesus. <laughs> And that's how the station was destroyed, Your Honor. So, I'm no, connected gonna, to the station. Gonna... Yeah. So, so you... I get a re-roll of that, I believe. Yes, you do. Um... No, you have, you have to do this as beep, 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 beep. <laughs> uh, and secondly, I'm going to give you all the threat for five dice. Oh. Oh. All the threat. Oh, my. Interesting. Oh. Okay, then. <laughs> you have no idea. Jesus I already have Christ. a plan how I'm going to spend this threat. Oh my. <laughs> I mean, carry on. <laughs> uh, let's see. I am going to dump a couple of this threat. Would intruder protocol apply because someone intruded yes. into the programming? Excellent. <clears throat> Ooh, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So the Romulan right. and the Scorpio like each other, but the forearms are starting to go at it. Interesting. Hi, right, Nia. Do your roll. Trying to think here for a second. Uh, take two threat for a third die, McCall. Awesome. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. If you break my station, I'm gonna have don't, words with. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 
It's fine. He's Don't breaking relations is what he's doing. Stop it. <laughs> no son-in-law of mine is going to be doing that. <laughs> ah. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. <laughs> oh, my. So that's um seven successes? Yep. You know what? Because it's going to be funny. Uh, I'm going to add uh, my determination too. Can I do that still? Uh, you haven't rolled, I... so yeah. <laughs> I uh, felt like yeah, okay. you rolled already. Jesus. Nope, I haven't rolled yet. That's why I was like, roll. I want to see what you get. All right, so the value is no one will stand between me and those I am to protect. I am to protect yeah. those on the station, and I don't know what this threat is. That's fair. <clears throat> It has gone down. Uh, okay. And with Nero, I can re-roll those zeros? Mm, I think it's just one. one. I think you can re-roll one with Nero. Let me double check. <clears throat> and this cut... <laughs> and this is where the shuttle goes down. Beep! <laughs> N-U-E-R. Nope. N-E-U-R. Uh, let's see, neural interface. Oh, also, would the station be assisting me? Ooh, that's a good question. Ah, uh, yeah, because you are actively working with the station instead of against it, yes. Uh, let's see. I'll get the station. Sure. Uh, station would computer <laughs> security. Uh, you may re-roll... Oh, uh, when you take... Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Oh, you re-roll the D20 gain from using the ship's systems. Okay. So... DS9 gives you one extra, so that's only... So that's matching, I believe. That's matching. And because you're defending that uh, victory, a tie goes to the defender. So, Commander Dolrum, you un... Uh, Deimos, you mean? Or, yeah, Commander D Deimos. It's a very tricky hack, but you trace it back to uh, Jared Nia. Lieutenant Commander Kivon... Yes, Lieutenant Commander. Can you uh, can you meet me in my office? I'm going to be paging down one of your engineering staff to my office in a moment here. I'll be there momentarily. And at this Lieutenant point, Lieutenant my Commander apologies. Demos. Oh, sorry, Lieutenant Commander Demos to Nia. Yep. Security office now. <laughs> I'm just looking at Nia, I'm like, Jaren, what did you just do? He just points over to, I mean, it's not like the Rami thing was, you know, hidden. And Meanwhile, just... Dolph walking over and going, hi, well, where are you going? <laughs> and why is Rami trying to bounce a, no a ball on her nose? What is going on? At this point, Rami's um, uh, self-correction algorithms have kicked in and reset her appearance to default. Okay, so we are now going to have... Fun, fun question. What was their reaction to that? <laughs> um, abject confusion, followed by several questions. Namely, <laughs> namely, are you aware that you are a fish? <laughs> <laughs> But were you aware that you were a fish? Uh, she was not aware that she was a fish. She apologizes for the inconvenience and confusion and will run a self-diagnostic. Okay, security office. So, ironically, both Demos and... Or not Demos, uh, Kievan and Nia arrive at the same time. Dura is out doing other guard stuff. As is Xyler. Uh, Zyler passes Nia on the way out and goes, Hey, bro! As he wanders past. Wasn't expecting to hear that from him. I mean, when you've been dating his sister for this long, you know. Fair. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander, what can we do for you? Since we have so many ambassadors aboard the station and we have so many personnel distributed out in kind of a stretched pattern, 
I saw fit to encrypt and also put alarms in all of our software and safety features for our terminals, including Rami. Nia, you mind telling me what this is? And he's just going to pull up on the screen the code you inject into Rami's code. I want to just swiftly change her appearance. Just was trying to do something lighthearted. Nothing malicious. Nothing malicious. You injected code into her programming while she was running. If anyone figures out how to do that in real time, that's a problem because that means you're getting past her safeguards. Trust me when I say that I can easily strengthen her coding. I don't trust you because of this action. Rami is a part of this crew. Do you understand that? Yes, but it was simply more of a prank, sir. I don't see the harm. So you would be in agreement then if, if I just decide to, let's say, take you to sick bay while you're unconscious and change your appearance to that of a bullion, that's perfectly fine because it's just a prank? That's not nearly the same. I mean, she's fine now. You'd be fine afterwards. Is this how you treat your crewmen? He kind of just raises an eyebrow. It's like, why the hell are you talking to me like this? <laughs> Kevon, I'm going to put an official report on his record that I'm going to submit to the captain. His actions can and have posed a risk to Rami's security. We already had one breach into her AI core physically. I do not need software in the muck, especially on a station that is fully automated with holographic emitters. So noted, and I agree. Jaren, we were just having such a great talk. You and I are going to have a further discussion much later after this conference is done. But at least in the meantime, I'm going to actually need you to... You know what? I'm going to remand you to your quarters for the time being until I actually have a discussion with the captain about this. God's sake. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? Nothing. That's what I thought. Lieutenant Commander, do you have a security personnel that might be able to escort Mr. Nia here to his quarter? If you feel he needs it, but I, I'm pretty sure that he should be able to get there on his own. Or do you feel that he may do anything else? To see a trust that I'm trying to give to somebody and impart yes yeah I want I want I would really like that please for you to have somebody escort him Be not because I'm worried but yes we're just going with yes very well Rainer to office and he's gonna call Rainer in and have him escort uh, Nia to his quarters very well sir uh, this way, if you could, Nia. Should have had Zyler do it. That would have been <laughs> hilarious. Oh, he'll catch enough shit, I'm sure. Okay, who wants to do something else? Or shall we care? carry on to the next day? Or next scene? Demos is just going to sigh and look at Kivo like... I am under... Not stress or anything like that. Since I've been part of Starfleet, Kivon, I have had to contend with people go, oh, you're a machine. You're nothing but a machine. I'm not. I'm more than that. And the fact that we have artificial intelligence in Starfleet that are granted, granted the right of an individual. Rami is an interesting case because she is an artificial intelligence. She has been extended 
as far as I'm aware, that policy. It is a shame to see individuals skirting on how to treat them or to the point of defacing them. I'm definitely not going to disagree with you on that one. I was actually just having a nice discussion with them, and I don't know. I think I might need to have Arya take a extra thought and look into him. I mean, I like him as an individual, and I see great potential in him. However... That action just worried me right there. Yeah. Also him at the bar getting plastered on Simtha Hall just to attempt to sober up. Yeah. That's my job to notice a lot of things. Yeah, I I, I understand that. I don't know, maybe I'm, st- my, maybe I'm actually turning into my father now more than anything. Hmm. Well, hopefully he learns from this. I mean, I still think that I still think the kid's a good guy. I just we're having our first interactions with most of these species here collectively, and as you said, a prank. As he said, a prank that was uncalled for. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe maybe we're looking too hard into this, but I don't know. Maybe maybe we're getting a little too salty ourselves. <laughs> I just don't like the improper code being injected into an operational program that's running in real time. And the fact that he did it so quickly is rather <clears throat> interesting. Yeah, that's the other part that it's making me wonder. And that I understand your thought process on that. I'm just talking to him, and next thing I know, you know, Rami's changed to look like me, look and sound like me, Lou. Well, I got some paperwork to fill out here. My shift's done in the next two hours. Well, I, I will leave you be. I'm going to have to have some thinking about Nia, but I'm going to go try to see about some of the other ambassadors, see if they're, everything's meeting to their needs and what alright okay um, Commander Dalrum Captain Crawford anything you guys like to do scene wise I was going to mix and mingle with some of the ambassadors that were up on the upper deck in the uh, All right. in the conference specifically the uh, ambassador uh, Samil Samili of the Nalu. Ah, yes. Who's like over at the? Who's over on the lounger? Okay. Well, you are going to attempt to socialize with your fellow officers, and they get called away as soon as you sit down. So you do the next best thing. Uh, lower floor, upper floor. There it is. <clears throat> Won't make too much of a scene out of this, but uh, she is. Uh, you see that she is keeping a bit of a distance from many of the other ambassadors. Uh, could be that she's just being cautious on the first day, or it could be the fact that no one else wants to approach her because she smells like uh, stale seawater and seaweed. You know, either or. I just walk up to her. Ambassador, how are you doing today? Commander, a pleasure. This is quite the... Uh, this is quite the selection of species that you were able to acquire. I must admit, there's even a couple that the Father Mess hasn't even had the chance to meet yet, like my, com- like uh, Mr. Uh, Haran over there. And she gestures to the um, Shobad Ne, or the Shobad, just sort of staring absent-mindedly out the window. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Vect Haran. Uh, is a member of the Shobane, who are a species that we came across when we were exploring through the uh, gate out there. 
Yes. So the uh, so the uh, cultural briefings told me he's just as far out of his depth as I am on this pun intended. She sort of chuckles, sort of evilly to herself. It sort of doesn't sound as good natured as one would think. So, Ambassador, tell me about yourself. You seem like you're over here, you're not really socializing with uh, anyone. Mm -hmm. I want to know about you. It's not a... We are not an open people, Commander. And it took a great deal of trust uh, from on the Fathomess's part to send me here. In Gre also, the fact that um, Commander, or your captain on the uh, Nighthawk managed to save my life went a great... Uh, yeah. Went went far in securing a more positive outlook for a potential alliance between us and the Federation. And to be completely honest, it's the star, it's the Federation who we are most interested in securing a better alliance with out of all of these individuals. We have m many of which are either children, she points to the, um, the zealous, uh, recluses, and she points to Haran and herself, or overly violent individuals, and she gestures to wherever the Kasala ambassador is across the way. <clears throat> you guys, you appear to be the most level-headed group of the, all of them. It comes from experience. The Federation did not start out that way. It's taken a great deal of time and even leading up to the formation of the Federation took a great deal of time and battles and it took some very daring people to do some very outlandish and noble deeds that ended up making a lot of people mad but also gaining the trust of a lot of people in the same uh, by doing the same thing so it's not without issues that have come up over the time, but we try to extend the olive branch as much as possible. And I hope, Commander, that you and your captain will uh, f further extend this branch, as you s call it, and officially recognize the realm of the Nalu's borders. It would do a great deal to legitimize our nation um, against the uh, ever encroaching uh, Kasala threat. That was something I was curious about. What is the history between you and your the Nalu and the Kasala? We're new to the region, so we are still learning of a lot of the diplomatic entities in the area, and I'm curious. The Kasala are a race. Don't let their outward docile nature fool you, Cap Commander. They are a race of uh, warmongers and conquerors. They held the largest swath of territory in our sector of space before the cybernetics attacked. My planet was among them that was subjugated. When the uh, cyborgs attacked en masse, the Kasala tried to fight back. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got their four arms torn off. It was glorious. I have a pair, the Fathom S has some um, has some uh, visualized histories of some of their major defeats. It's very amusing to watch them struggle. Anyways, the uh, cybernetic ones tore up their territory, um, assimilated many of them, and paid very little heed to those of us who chose to hide beneath the waves. So, as the Kasala Empire fell, the realm of the Nalu grew as we were able to sneak through the cybernetics notice into other oceanic worlds. And as once they vanished, I understand you, Starfleet, has something to do with that. We were able to 
establish the realm. The Kasala didn't like that, but they were they're too busy rebuilding to pose any major threat, and we're too established for them to kick us out. You know, that's not too far from the border wars that the Federation had to battle out at the very infancy of it. Us, the Federation, had to make a spot for itself in between a lot of galactic entities. Um, The Romulans, the Klingons, both of which who have representatives here, have both fought wars with the Federation over a multitude of times. Um, The Romulans and the Federation only recently have started gaining trust with each other again. Um, However, the Klingons and the Federation were at war for, oh, there was a period of almost 100 years that was almost constant war. (laughs) But over time, and with a few daring people doing a lot of daring deeds, uh, a mutual understanding and appreciation for each other were brought up. We're very different cultures. They are a system of honor. They like to fight. They are very warlike. While the Federation is very peace-seeking, as it's seen here. But at the end of the day, we have a common understanding that we benefit better by honoring each other in our differences than fighting over the differences we have. It's a noble sentiment, to be sure. And it's one that the fathom echoes. However, one cannot simply achieve peace just by laying down their weapons. It requires both sides to come to an agreement, and I'm afraid that the Kasala have proven too proud, for now, to uh, lay down their arms completely. Still... Which I can understand, because they have four of them. And she sort of bubbles with laughter. Her um, tail sort of slithers in um, uh, slithers in time with the laugh. Uh, she shakes her head. Commander. And with that... Uh, but I believe that's to be accurate. Still, I should go and talk to some neighbors. See if there's something worth getting from them oh. well ambassador seeing as our histories are traveling down similar paths if the opportunity arises that the Nalu as well as uh, the Kasala would like to sit down and have those talks we'd welcome the opportunity to host it here on a neutral ground yes, and Give us, a, give a little history of uh, what we've gone through. Being a coalition of planets, as the Federation is, we have a lot of different histories and a lot of different stories that we can pull examples for of things that could benefit, I think, both sides. When we are ready, to, when we are ready to talk, we shall investigate. Oh. A word of advice, Commander. She gestures to the uh, bench where um, Belthier Voidrunner is, chatting with uh, the um, co- with the Iban of the Silatine Alliance. Make sure that he uh, stays away from our quarters. The Fathomess has a bounty on his head for attempting to smuggle out Nalu technology about. 15 years back the only reason we have I haven't told my bodyguards to act on it is the neutral ground of your starbase he's a very interesting character I will give you that I will make sure to pass the message along yes good day commander good day to you as well ambassador um Captain Crawford, anything you'd like to do? 
Um, let me think. Um, I don't think there's anything else for me, no. Very well. Okay. Uh, so the first day of uh, talks comes to a close, and let's roll the macro and see how well you guys did. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Cassaval Empire um, are not very good with the Federation. Hmm. All in all, a positive day, unless you're Starfleet, but oh well. <laughs> let's see. So one goes down between the Federation and one half of the Cassaval. Apparently, you guys did so much effort to help um, alleviate the Facilitine Alliance's um, insult that you have inadvertently insulted the their Cassival Empire counterparts. And again, the forearms uh, seem to be doing well, uh, I believe. Let's see, the Shobadne and the Kasala are once again... Oh, uh, they had gotten in a bit of a turf war uh, prior, but those have neutralized out. And the Scorpion and the Vitaris Imperium seem to be getting along, which is interesting. Uh, let's see, Vitaris, Scorpi, plus there. <clears throat> cool. So, uh, Captain. Um, yes. Actually, so it is a the beginning of day two. Uh, everyone is beginning to assemble once again in the diplomacy halls. Well rested and ready to have another go at this uh, show called Diplomacy. Um, however, uh, both just as you are about to commence the uh, speech for the second day, uh, Lieutenant Commander Dusk, or L Lieutenant Dusk, calls both you and Commander Dolrum to operations discreetly. Okay. And let's see. So you are here. Op Center is here. <clears throat> uh, ops is one of those uh, secure environments where the diplomatic individuals do not get to come. Uh she sort of just gestures over to Lieutenant Derval. He spotted it first, Captain. Lieutenant first, or Lieutenant Derval. Captain, the early warning systems outside Gate 16 uh, triggered a most distressing alert signal, sir. Uh, what is it, Lieutenant? It appears to be a Borg signature, sir. It entered the gate. It is going to enter Gateway 16 in roughly 10 seconds, and we'll have. 45 seconds until it reaches the hub. Put the station on red alert. Have all diplomats and other individuals return to embassies and quarters. Let's have all the ships brought into the docking rings, too. Let's not have anything out there. Agreed. Okay. All senior staff to the bridge. Okay, now we are going to cut to main page. So, all of the ships have uh, have been pulled inside through a series of coordinated tractor beams. I'm assuming that the support fleet is going to be in defensive positions? Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, defense positions around the pattern delta. Roosevelt's already split into MVM. Fair enough. Duly noted. And the Hawking's in the back, because it's a science vessel, not a fighter, and the Apollo is docked. We'll okay. kill it with science. It's fine. I mean, that's <laughs> really how they deal with the Borg most of the time. They just out-science it. Um, okay. Which is amusing, because it's a technological advancement. Yeah. <laughs> so, remember all that threat you gave me? Oh, yeah. There was oh, one. Jesus. Now there's two. Two Borg spheres um, eject through uh, Gateway 16. Um, 
uh, who, who are, uh, Dolrum, you're on, t are you running tactical or is that Demos's thing? Yes. I mean, we both could do it. Yeah. Um, one of you, please give, uh, one of you run a, uh, insight tactical on the sh spheres, please. Uh, this will be a difficulty of three. All right, Damos, I'm shooting for 12. If you have something higher than that, go for it. Uh, insight uh, security. security. Insight security. That's a 15. By all right. means. <laughs> Although I have my determination and you blew yours. Yeah, I do have a focus, though. Uh, Starfleet tactical systems might apply. That, that would work. You just had to call in two Borg spheres, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I also have tactical systems, so... Uh, I can assist. I, I also have yeah. the... Um, I'm plugged into the station, so... Yeah. I can uh, also have the stationary role. Yep, station can assist with uh, sensor security. Alright. Say it, Dolan, if you want to assist. I will assist with my insight security. That's two, two successes from Demos the Slayer. Uh, so you can re-roll that zero because of no, the... No, that one... Zero is from me as a... Oh, as, as a person. Stolen. Okay. I... Uh, Kivon, do you want to get the station? Oh, I got yeah, it. Sure. Yeah. Oh, there oh, it is. There okay, go. so that is the... Hmm. So you get uh, three successes, four successes, so one momentum. Um, the Borg spheres, well, they're obviously Borg. Um, you notice two things of interest. One is that all their defensive screens are up. Their weapons are not. Uh, there appears to be several ba uh, battle scars across their uh, their surface that have not regenerated closed. And each sphere only has roughly 100 to 150 life forms aboard, where a historical complement would be somewhere along the lines of 1,000 to 2,000 drones. Hmm. Uh, they begin hailing. And Patch it through. Uh, this individual. My name is Verity. I speak for the Unimatrix Collective. On behalf of those remaining from Unimatrix Zero, we request asylum and protection of the Federation. And with that, we are going to end the story for the night. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, jeez, man. Come on. I, I'll take the cliffhanger. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, thank you on behalf of everyone. I hope you enjoyed the more of a laid-back episode than is usual. I know I did, because I had to do less GMing. So, yay. So, <laughs> uh, thank you on behalf of myself and my players. Uh, Cerberus will be back Friday, the t February 21st at this time. So, until next time, bye-bye. Bye.